Oh my God, this is an amazing show we're gonna have today. Paul, oh my God, Dan gave me an ultimatum. Hm. What about you? And what happens when your significant other trashes your appearance? He better have that black card ready, y'all. Mm. Was that supposed to be us? <laughs> Didn't even sound like us. <laughs> that was like a telenovela from our interns. And way too much. You are so extra. <laughs> That's next on the show. Yeah. Crystal City, they have amazing events going on all winter that you need to be a part of. Doesn't matter the weather. From wine tastings to bike rides, art shows to beer gardens, street hockey to fashion shows, and so much more. Just visit crystalcity.org for all the details. That's right. And on Thursday, February 8th, we are having an event at Mervis Diamonds. Our friend at Mervis Diamonds. We love them. 1700 K Street. So here's the deal. I have a new book coming out. All you have to do is buy my book at Target, BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon, or Walmart. Send in your receipt to contest at PullingItAllTogether.com, and you're entered into the contest to win a pair of Mervis Diamond studs. Check us out at the event February 8th from 5 to 9. Love it, Paul Wharton. Hey. Hey. All right. Hey phrase, what's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey phrase, what's the phrase that you hear every day? Hey phrase, what's the phrase that you hear? Tune in, yeah, you gotta tune in. Sarah Frazier on the mic and she about to begin the co-host with the most boring looking fleet. Take a friend, smell test. Oh god. <laughs> it's good today. I showered. No need to second guess. Separate from the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the week goes by so fast, and yet at the same time, so much crap happens in a week that I always am like, God, when am I going to see Paul? Because we have so much to talk about. You know, and do you not call me for that reason so we can talk about it all here? (laughs) Or you just don't call me because you just don't like me? (laughs) No, I try to space it out. I really do because I love to, I love talking to you in general, but then I like when we don't talk for a couple days, then we have a lot to catch up on. So I like when the show is so full of topics and life events that we need to catch up on. I agree. I love it. So, oh my God. I did think about calling you the other day. Why? I, For I, what? Just, I was just like, why don't I call Sarah? You know, <laughs> are you ever in the car and you're just like, you want to talk to somebody at that yes. moment and just, just bullshit with them? Yes. And I was going through my normal list of people and I'm like, damn, Sarah should be on you that list. You know why I don't call you more often too? Why? Because honest to God, and I'm failing at this so hardcore, one of my New Year's resolutions is to gossip less. <laughs> and whenever I call you, it is nothing but, did you hear about this? No, no, right? you're the one who gossips. I, I just listen. <laughs> People would think, see, that's the thing. People think that I'm the one. You're actually the gossip. <laughs> oh, my, Paul, it's gotten out of control. Honest to God, I read all these articles now about what you're not supposed to do in the workplace. I do all the fucking stuff that you're not supposed to do in the workplace. Number one, gossip, gossiping about everybody. Honest to God. I was working yesterday in the Mansion Murder podcast. The poor guy that I podcast with, Ronnie, the entire trip to our, to our interview, I just gossiped away. The guy didn't get a word in. I'm like, okay, this is really an addiction. Well, you know what's a bad it's really sign bad. when people leave you and they go burn sage. <laughs> Every time I leave Sarah, I have to go burn sage. I'm like, oh, shit. That was entertaining as hell, but I better clear out this, all know. this crazy energy. You know? you know what? I blame my grandmother because one of the things that my grandmother used to love to do, my grandmother, Frazier, and this is, of course, why I was such an overweight kid, and my grandmother was super overweight. Okay. She would pick me up after school. We'd go make chocolate chip cookies, and then we'd eat the cookies and drive around our small town in Maine and gossip about all the people. I was like, Ted, this is like, honestly, okay. God, how we bond. The final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> okay. Now I know. I, that And it was like this fun thing thing that we used to love to do and I don't know why but she would tell me all about is it full circle, full circle? Yeah. that was a full circle moment she'd be like oh this person had an affair on their husband and that's what I don't even know why she was telling me this when I was 10 but I was so riveted by it. oh my god so bad okay now I get it now I get it anyway oh my god we have Paul this show I'm so excited about because we have <laughs> so much freaking stuff to talk about I want to talk about it can we please discuss how sex robots can be hacked and may kill you while you're making love to them? Okay, I can't that wait. That really scares me. <laughs> to discuss. Also, you will not believe the major celebrity who's been fired, but who now still calls his old job to give them tips. And I'm dying to know if you've ever had a former coworker <laughs> who still checks in with you. I have so many stories. Oh my and God. then I seriously have a personal one that I'm a little nervous about sharing because I was given an ultimatum in my house. I think it was an ultimatum. It wasn't really said like that, but I'm really, I don't, Paul, I'm really nervous. Oh my God. Sarah overshares today, you all. (laughs) I can't wait. I got my sage at home ready for you, girl. Let her rip. (laughs) Well, 
Okay, here's the deal. Yeah, and this happened? is, and then also we have an update on Natalie. I oh, want to, oh, because yes, we had Natalie. a lot of people, and I'll, I'll give you her email address too. A lot of people reached out to us. Natalie was on last week. She's 27 years old. She was diagnosed with breast cancer right after Thanksgiving. And she sent Paul and me the sweetest email. And she essentially said, look, this podcast gets me through. This really helps me. And you guys don't know how much you mean to me. And I really want Paul to help me pick out my wig. And Sarah, I want you to shave my head, which was like a bad idea. And she ended up finding like a, a nice hairdresser that's really going to do it. But anyway, her story touched so many people because, you know, that's the thing. You just never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Oh, so true. For any of us. So we have an update on her. Love um, it. Love it. But anyway, I was going to tell you, so this week in my house was just really strange. Oh, my God. This week in Sarah's house. Okay, come on now. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. <laughs> oh, Paul, you'll like this one. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Paul's like, this is great. I don't have I to it. share. I love it. I Paul's know. like, I can sit back for a day. I'm going to sit back. I'm I want to hear all your business because normally I'm over here telling all my business. <laughs> Get that, shake up that carrot juice. That's it's going right. to be in enough. So, okay, here's my deal. You know, Dan and I are coming up on our fifth anniversary. Oh, my gosh. In, like, March. Do you know I've never been with someone for five? Well, other than Michael, but he was in Ireland. Part of that time, right? He was in Ireland pretty much all that time. Okay. I mean, he lived with me in New York for the first year, but then after that, he was in Ireland. So I've never been with someone living with them in the same space for five years. What's it like? <laughs> Well, it has its moments. It's like <laughs> highs and lows. I mean, I, it's like it's difficult at times, okay. but then it's really fun and rewarding. And every day, I really do look forward to him coming home. Like that is it's amazing. my favorite part of the day. Is do like you get when, up and greet him when he comes home? Yeah, yeah, we we really do. And every time we like kiss, and it is my favorite part. I really look forward to seeing him because like I just love bouncing ideas off him. And the craziest part is he works in sports, you know, mm -hmm. in youth sports. So. He's a totally different world from us, but he's actually really creative. So he always has great ideas and opinions. And when he used to listen to this podcast, he had a lot of more opinions, but we've banned him. So. We banned him, yes. <laughs> so now let's talk about him. So, so what did exactly, he say to you? So this week he said out of the blue, which he never brings up any difficult conversations. I have to be that person, right? <laughs> and he said to me, we started talking about having a family and when we were going to get married. And I was like, oh, Probably next year. I was like, next year. And then I, I was like, God, I don't know, though. Next year is going to be here really soon. And I can't imagine, like, having a kid is this when in I'm your 37. Head? No, I'm saying this out loud. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. That just made me uncomfortable. Okay. okay, go ahead. And so he was like, he got dead serious. And he was like, look, he's like, it really is making me nervous that you keep pushing the timeline back. And he said, I really need to know, do you ever want to have a kid or do you not want to have a child because if you don't or you don't think that you want to have a kid until you're 40 whatever that means if i could even have a kid when i was 40 mm -hmm. i need to know so i can figure out what i want to do <gasps> died! okay oh died. my god i know so you didn't so... get laid last night <laughs> no i definitely <laughs> did not so i'm just like oh my god Okay, so, so let's think about this. How do you really feel? You know, the podcast audience is our extended family. Let's just talk about this with the people. How do you, Sarah Frazier, how do you feel I about feel like, having a child at this point in your life? Well, see, I'm, I don't think I can. I'm not ready. Like, because I well, want... Well, you can. I can. Yeah. But my issue is this, is... I don't know. I feel like my career right now is still mm -hmm. like so much my number one passion. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, and maybe this is bad and this is like real talk and I'm sure all the moms on here are going to be like, oh my God. But in my mind, I cannot separate from, I feel like to be a good mother, yes. you have to put the kid first. So I'm really worried I about- I think most mothers would agree with that. Do you think? But then how do you keep your, then what does my career path look like? Because since I was eight years old, mm -hmm. you know this, mm -hmm. I've had this story talk with you. I have a vision, like I want to own and run my own talk show, yes. whatever that looks like, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So my fear is like, how am I going to do that and be a good mother? Well, I mean, I think a lot of people do it. You know, you look at people on the Today but Show. do they, and they really? Do, I feel like, I don't know. I mean, didn't Kelly Ripa kind of already land that job? And then she had like two other kids? Yeah. Didn't Megyn Kelly already there, work probably, for Fox? Like she already had a pretty legit job. Then yeah. she Savannah Guthrie, isn't she pregnant? Savannah Guthrie, she already landed the job and then she got pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm, Hoda mm -hmm. Kotb. Yeah, she Bethany adopted. Bethany Frankel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is God, I'll turn against Dan in this, but um, no, but but see, that's the thing. Then I'm being like so serious. Like it, 
like the thought of losing him like just breaks my heart. Like I don't want to do that. So I'm So really... then there's the choice. Would you rather have your career or be with Dan? I I don't even I Both can't... is the answer, yeah, but Yeah, exactly. You know, but I you're mean, not willing to choose. Um, how long do you think I have to <laughs> Longer than this podcast. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I'm really, I'm really torn. Wow. I don't know what to do because I don't want to lie to him or be. I don't want to deceive him in any way. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But at the same time, then I, I don't know. I mean, maybe a kid helps your career too. I don't know. But he's not okay with you saying you're just not. You're not sure on the timing, but you know you want to be with him. That would be a nice answer to get for well, me. Yeah, maybe I should just say that. Listen, Dan, the only thing I know for sure is that I want to be with you. I mean, it sounds great. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I hope As long enough. as I'm with you, I don't care about anything else. Yeah, but what if I'm going to, what if he's like, okay, because he'll be 40 in a couple of years. What mm-hmm. if he's like, well, I can't wait that long. Like, I want to have a kid next year. What am I going to do? How's he going to upgrade from you, though? Who's he going to end up with? <laughs> That's what I always say. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. She's not going to bring him all the joy you bring him. I agree. Good luck. That's why I tell him, move out to Sterling. You know, Best and screw wishes. you with the hay phrase with Paul Wharton t-shirt on and go yeah. down on you and all that other stuff you do. <laughs> At the commercial break, two and two, you'll be right back, literally. Oh, my God, Paul. You're so lucky you're not in a relationship because this is what happens in serious relationships. Oh, so that's what that's what people say that in relationships to people that aren't. Oh, you are so lucky you're alone. Oh, my God. You're not alone. Oh, God, you're so lucky. You are so not alone. What's going on with your Brussels man anyway? Well, I talked to him this morning. It's so interesting. You know, he's so weird. How can a grown man that's successful not be a morning person? Which, by the way, he's moving here, right? Oh, he's oh, not? God. Well, Isn't that weird? I don't know that I get along with people that aren't morning people. I do not want to wake up next to somebody that's a grump in the morning. Yeah, that's no, that would be hard. That's a problem for me. So today he was just telling me like that he struggles every morning to get up. How the fuck does a grown man <laughs> struggle to get up in the morning? What the hell else do you want to do but get up and go make you some money? Like, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? Like, oh my get God. up, take a walk. I mean, he's got a great career. You know, he's got a wonderful life. What does he do all? But for? what does he do all night? What does he just party? Well, he and must do be it? sitting up drinking red wine and reading <laughs> books. You know, he's smart. <laughs> you know, he's damn smart people. Wait, why do I always forget his name? I feel like his that's name not a good is sign. Renzo. Renzo. R e n z o. Okay, that's a bad sign. I always remember Michael. I don't remember oh, Renzo. Oh, Michael. I love. I got to go visit Michael. I've got to go visit Michael. Well, that's your second book. God, I've got to you go got to get him. through this first book, yeah. and then that's your second book. Okay, yeah. Um, by the way, you guys, we also want you to do us a favor today too. With this podcast, will you please go? We are on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on iHeartRadio. Be sure to leave us a review on iTunes. Hit five stars. You can just search the Hey Fresh podcast or Hey Fresh podcast with Paul Wharton. Find us. Uh, hit five stars and tell us what you love about the show because we really appreciate that. And share it with your friends and also email us. We'd love yes. to hear from you all. Oh my God. Yeah, you can always email us. Oh, What's your be, email? That'd be great. Paul Wharton style at Yahoo. Perfect. And you can email Sarah at heyfrage.com and let us know your thoughts. Oh, wow. um, okay, so let's talk. There's a lot of good stories that I want to get to and then we'll get to some listener emails. So first of all, Matt Lauer is the celebrity and I thought this was this was one of my favorite stories of the week because I think this is hysterical. He apparently, you know, he got fired over a little over two months ago mm-hmm. from the Today Show for sexual harassment allegations, right? Which okay. he then admitted that some of them were basically true. But a new story just came out from Daily Beast that essentially says that even though Matt Lauer has been fired, he's still calling producers on air talent and giving them feedback about the show. Do it you- doesn't matter anymore, Matt. You have no power. <laughs> he's got you- no power anymore. I mean, it's over. Does, don't you feel like that's so typical of someone who's such like a narcissist or is so used mm-hmm. to being in power? Mm-hmm. Um, they say that Matt has still not learned to take a back seat. According to Page Six, reports of the disgraced Today Show host who was fired in November uh, has been shooting off notes to producers from his Hamptons estate giving unsolicited feedback on latest episodes. Sources say Lauer recently sent a producer an email saying that he felt that they used the wrong music to kick off a segment. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> But my question is, have you ever had that um, co-worker? Because I've had a great experience with when I was in radio. My first, like when I was on 99.5, there mm-hmm. was a producer. Anyway, this person had left and um, they would still call me fairly regularly. I think it was the only person that kind of spoke to them. And they'd want to know like all the inner workings that was going on and like what different software we were using. I mean, this person was kind of a huge nerd. Mm-hmm. I was like... Oh. 
why do you even care? But they called all the time and what? wanted to know various things about the station. So when but did you I, stop taking the call? Well, I, I, after the third call, I was like, I kind of got a little paranoid because I was like, why is this person calling and asking about logistics of the radio station? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what software you, we're using, who's been hired, where we're going to be, what events. You know what I mean? That's it was much. a little crazy. That's too much. Well, you know how you like to call me braggadocious? <laughs> It's called brag plating. It's when you brag complain. <laughs> which, which, by the way, that's a good talk. Oh. You were actually mad at me, weren't you, last week? Yeah, I told my sister. I was like, you know, do you, do you believe what she said to me on the air? She called me a, a, a brag planer. <laughs> I was so upset by that. But let me just brag plain a little bit more okay. today. <laughs> First of all, okay, I'm, le- I'm going somewhere with the coworker thing with this, but I'm starting in the steam room. All right, well, yeah. This is the thing. I'm in the steam room yesterday at Equinox. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You all know AJ, she's a fool. So she works in my office on the day she's not here. And AJ's our intern too. Yeah, she's amazing. She's back. She had the horrific radio station. Yeah, yeah right. Back. So more from her later. So if AJ was telling the story, she'd be like, at Equinox, which is located in the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? AJ, get over here, get on the mic. Your microphone is on. Because you, <laughs> you do this impression of Paul, right? I do. Yeah, I do. I, I love to do that. You're right. Brag Oh, just amazing. Right, right. Yeah, just know where you got to go tomorrow. <laughs> go ahead. Let the people in. Do it. So I was getting my two a day in at the gym at Equinox. <laughs> Y'all know where that is. It's at the Ritz Carlton located in. <laughs> Sometimes it's even too much for me. <laughs> Located in the Ritz Carlton, the supreme workout <laughs> location I of the district. I never say all that. You are so extra. But let me tell you what happened. Okay, so hold that thought, AJ. But I ran into a guy. Well, I almost ran into a guy. Thank God for that supreme. <laughs> VIP locker room. You know I had like the extra extra at the gym. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in the back. What's the extra extra? So basically, in my gym, there's like an executive uh, locker room behind the regular locker room, and you put a code in on the wall, okay. and then you go to the back back, and okay. then you know it's better. Um, so anyway, I ran into a guy that worked with me. Actually, he was like kind of a boss ish something at okay. the last TV station I worked at. I'm not gonna say the name. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And it's not Jim. I love Jim. It was another guy there. He was such an asshole. Okay, he was always telling me no. He was always trying to decrease my pay. I'm walking through the locker room from the steam room. And by the way, people were talking in the steam room, and I was totally annoyed. Do people talk in the steam room? Oh, it's supposed to be very quiet voices. Okay, these yeah. two guys, and I, I, I swear it was privilege. I'm not gonna say what kind, but I, <laughs> I think we they know. were so loud. <laughs> I mean, totally ruined my moment. So I get out of the steam room, because that's, you know, you got to be with the regular people in the steam room. Just kidding. I just did that for AJ. I'm going back to the executive locker room, and I'm walking toward this guy that used to diss the fuck out of me at this last station and try to, like, downgrade my pay and basically say I wasn't shit. I'm walking toward him, and he's, like, you know, raising his hands to say, hi, Paul. And I'm like, <laughs> go back in the back in the special locker room right as I'm walking toward him he thinks I'm walking to him I'm like Da-da-da-da-da. I'm like this could not have worked out any better I'm like I can't wait to tell AJ and Sarah <laughs> so your your brag planing basically helped you out of this amazing situation where this guy saw you and then I mean I finally got even there you go I with, love with that with my ex coworker. he was an asshole <laughs> and then I you know I put the code in and then poof I was gone <laughs> So that's all I got. Okay. I thought you were going somewhere else with this about a coworker that would like still call and haunt you from a past oh, job. Oh no, I don't take those calls. Okay. I don't take those calls. Okay. That was... No, I scream oh, the God. fuck out of my calls. You correct me up. Uh, Golden Globes were big over the weekend. You know, I think everyone's kind of talked out about Oprah yeah. as far as running for president. I don't think she's really going to run. Do you? Um, I hope she does. I got to be honest. I was in my car the other day. <laughs> Don't you even look at me, AJ. <laughs> BMW. My car, let me just explain, let me just explain to you what I mean by my car. <laughs> let me take you there one step further. Okay, stop. Okay, you do way too much. You have gone too far. No, but I thought about Oprah being president and I shed a tear while like driving down the street in the middle of the day. Why? I was so happy about oh, it. Oh, oh, about oh, oh, what I agree. this world would feel like, <laughs> about how we could all come back together after all this division and just feeling like we're just in this foreign place right now, like what it would feel like. It just made me shed a tear just I... for humanity. 
I know it would be mm-hmm. amazing. But do you really think that she's seriously going to run? She could. I think that she said in the past that she would never, but she hasn't said much right now. Um, there's been a lot of talk and speculation. I think she'd be great, but I don't know if it's really going to happen. And I don't know that she'd be really, I mean, I think, I know nothing about politics. Maybe you have a lot more friends on the inside of the political scene. I don't think any scene. of them know anything about politics, but she knows about um, relationships, yeah. humanity, compassion. I mean, you know, she's a smart woman. So it, I think that's all it really takes. Well, the Golden Globes were very um, powerful this year. Yes. You know, a lot of uh, strong women bringing other strong women, like the woman that started the, the um, hashtag Me Too. Yeah, but there's Toronto also- Burke. Toronto Burke, Mm -hmm. thank you. Um, There's also a lot of controversy, too, that Rose McGowan um, and several other women that were Harvey Weinstein accusers were not invited to the Golden Globes. And also Alyssa Milano, who really got got it, you know, booted back up. I'm surprised she wasn't there. No, she wasn't invited at all, which I thought was really shocking that they would do that. Um, And Rose McGowan has come out and said that she's going to have to sell her house for $2 million to support her legal fund to keep fighting Harvey Weinstein, because she's basically suing him for retribution. And then that she was banned from Hollywood. But is he going to have anything by the time she gets to court? I mean, is he... Do I know don't I mean? know. I mean, I guess it's hard to say, right? Because maybe maybe he would. And I think the Harvey Weinstein production company, I guess, is like holding on by a thread, but it's still holding on. So they probably have something. But could she, she get some of the money from the, the legal defense fund four times up that they did that has $16 million in it? I know she's a Hollywood actress, but this seems like a, you know, a kind of case that well, she Rose, get some of that cash. I, it sounds like Rose McGowan's kind of been cut off from Hollywood. And Asia Argento were two of the uh, disgraced, uh, who accused disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein of sexual misconduct and assault, said they were excluded from Sunday's awards, which centered on the anti-sexual harassment movement. Um, as you know, celebrities walked the red carpet with pins Times Up. Miss McGowan and Argento said that they still support the Times Up, but they were not invited and they don't understand why. Mm. Uh, Miss Argento tweeted to Miss Rose McGowan, no one should forget that you were the first one who broke the silence. Anyone who tries to diminish your work is a troll and an enemy of the movement. Wow. You give me the courage to speak out and I'm on your side until I die. So, so Rose was the first one that came out against Harvey Weinstein? Yes, wow. with rape allegations, yeah. So I don't know, I thought it was very interesting that they weren't invited. Hollywood is still... You know, it's still a club. I hate to say it. it's not a boys club, but it's a club. And you think you're just either in or you're out. You're in or you're out. Um, also, James Franco, who won for Best Actor um, for his movie, which I really, really want to see, um, which is all about that crazy Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. Um, and have you got, has anyone here ever seen The Room, that movie? Which Mm -hmm. is like supposed to be arguably one of the worst films ever made. But this crazy Tommy Wiseau character makes this room, this movie, The Room, which now has become this cult classic. Then Seth Rogen, James Franco end up wanting to do a movie about the life of Tommy Wiseau. Anyway, um, so Franco (laughs) wins for Best Actor, but he's now also been accused of sexual harassment allegations himself. He was on Colbert last night. So take a listen. You got on a Golden Globes night because you were wearing a Time's Up pin. In support of the Time's Up movement, uh, which has been created by many powerful uh, women in Hollywood to say the time is up for the abuse, uh, misuse of women, both sexually and otherwise, not only in Hollywood, but around the country. They've established a, a fund, a legal defense fund for women and men who are being abused in this way. You got criticized for wearing that. Um, do you know why? And, and, and what, what do you have a response? Do you have anything you want to say about that criticism? Well, first I want to say I, I, I work because I do support it. I, I was, you know, look, I was so excited to, to win, but being in that room that night was incredible. I mean, it was, okay. it was powerful, and there were incredible voices, okay. and I support it. I support change. I support uh, 50-50 in 2020, which just means, you know, people that are underrepresented, women and um, people of color, people in the LGBT community get, you know, positions, leadership positions that, that they fill all positions that they've been deprived of. I completely believe in that. Um, Okay, well, wait a minute now. Okay. That's why I wore it. But why are you being criticized? Um, (laughs) There were some things on Twitter. um, Today. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I haven't read them. I've heard about them. Um, Okay, first of all, I don't, I have no idea what I did to Ali Sheedy. I directed her in a a play off Broadway 
I had nothing but a great time with her. Uh, uh, She's the one that accused him of being inappropriate. I had no, I have no idea why she was upset. She took the tweet down. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't speak for her. I don't know. Um, the others. <laughs> he goes look, on. This is uncomfortable. In my life, I, I pride myself on taking responsibility for things that I've done. I have to do that to maintain my. Uh, You're not buying well-being. it. You think he's squirmy? Uh, I do it whenever I know that that. He's got some major bags under his changed. eyes. I make oh, it a point yeah. to do it. The things that I heard that were on Twitter um, are not accurate, um, but I completely support people coming out and being able to have a voice because they didn't have a voice for so long. So I don't want to. I don't want to, you know. Anyway, he goes on to talk to Colbert him. a little bit longer. Oh. Says that he'll right his wrongs. You're not buying it, though, huh? He looks I mean, rough in damn. that clip. He's he came got some... straight. No, he came straight from the after party to the Colbert show. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think he some... slept since the Golden Globes. <laughs> he's got some serious bags under those eyes. And James Franco is so crazy. Well, I feel like. Well, let me ask you something. I feel like. If someone accused me of something, and I was on a platform like Colbert, and I knew the person, and I'd worked with them, I had, you know, whatever, directed them, produced them, whatever, and I absolutely had no idea what they were talking about, I, what the, uh-uh, get her on the phone. Y'all got a three-way, call her. You know, no, really. Right, if like, someone's this is accusing crazy. you, you would be like, call I'd be like, their My relationship up. was this. We came in at nine, we left at five. I don't know what that bitch did after, you know what I mean? Like that. You'd be like, get them on the line. Let's like do this, let's get Or confront. I would yeah. say this, we were fucking, it was, it was mutual. Right. It was consensual. You know, we, we screwed for three weeks. That right. was the extent of our relationship. I never called her again and she got mad. I, hey, I mean, you make a good point. Violet Paley also went on and she said, cute hashtag times up pin, James Franco. Remember the time you pushed my head down in a car towards your exposed penis? And that other time you told my friend to come to your hotel when she was 17 after you'd already been caught doing that to a different 17 year old? Oh, that okay. was retweeted. So see, shit just got real. Nearly 12,000 times. Um, Jessica Valenti says, whatever, I still remember James Franco trying to pick up a teenager on Instagram. Damn. What's with these guys with these little young um with these little young boys? I mean girls. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, shit. Boy. I don't understand either. What people like why people are into yeah, trying to hook up with younger. There's... I have no idea. I mean, right? I there's enough people over the age of 18 who want to have sex with you for free. It just makes no sense but to me. But even 18 bothers me. Like what is the deal with that? Because I know a guy that um he lives in D.C. There's very few people I don't like. I don't like this person. I just don't like him, okay? But he's like a 50-something-year-old guy, but he's always dating like a 20-year-old. And it's just so I may weird. have dated and, him. <laughs> no, 20-year-old guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and they're so young looking. I might have dated him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you want to tell me? <laughs> Like, well, again, I might say Some people this. think I'm a man. It's cool. I do think I probably, when they do an autopsy on my body, that I have one Are you testicle a lodged inside you me. You might be a hermaphrodite. I feel like I could be. Yeah, I could. I'm almost a hermaphrodite. That I also know. explains a lot. <laughs> the plaid shirt you wear. Facial hair. It's not showering. The facial hair. <laughs> You know what I, mean? I agree. Yeah. I think I got a lot of testosterone in here. Go okay. on. But it's not really my business. Why does that bother me when people, is it because I have nieces that are, like I have a niece that is 22 years old. I think it just always looks desperate, honestly. It mm -hmm. looks really desperate. And it looks like there's something really fucked up with you. It really does. Like, I mean, James Frank, I don't know how old James Franco was when he's hitting on 17 year olds. Okay. And there's some 17 year olds that might look, maybe James Franco didn't know if you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're, we're going out on a limb here, but these people calling him out seem to think that he knew they were 17 and didn't give a shit. So that's right. a major problem. And I, I have no idea what the infatu infatuation is with young, with older people and younger people. It's just, it's crazy to me. And I, I think no it idea. should bother you because I think you're normal and you're like, this seems really fucking weird. And it is weird. And I'm sorry, like, even when you see a much older man with, say, like a 26-year-old woman, it just looks creepy, doesn't it? Why do you want to feel like their father? It's just so odd to me. Because people, people have father issues. I was watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and I love Erica Jane. Okay. But it explains so much. I've been there. Like, when, I, when my dad passed away at 15 and then you're in the dating world subconsciously you are there you there is a hole in you that mm -hmm. is looking to be fixed okay which is why we often attract people that are wrong for us and you have to unlearn that pattern 
and that's why I was always dating these older guys. And then, of course, I they were very fatherly, right? And at first, you're kind of attracted to that because you miss that at points of your life when you needed it. But then you grow to go, okay, especially if, once you start working on your mental health. Like, I started going to therapy when mm-hmm. I was 28, and I was like, yeah, this really isn't fulfilling dating these men that are 15 years older than I am or, t- or 18 years older at one point, which was absolutely crazy. It was like... Oh, this is creepy. But you don't realize that at first. First, How can you're drawn I explain to that. why I was dating so many married men in the beginning of my dating situation? Probably because maybe I don't know. Knowing you, I just <clears throat> wonder if it was like for from what I know. I don't know if this mm-hmm. is true or not, but I get a sense. Come on, therapy. No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, let me get my crystal ball to my. Th- <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like half. This is great. This is the cheapest therapist I know. <laughs> fantastic (laughs) but no you're very close with your dad right and you have a very strong relationship with him you don't want to disappoint your parents and you guys have never really talked about you being gay right it's just kind of like this is who i am well we did we talked about it but how well i told my stepmother or she asked me and i i asked her not to tell my father i was 19 okay and she told him okay and you know i have a gay uncle my dad has a gay brother right okay so my dad set me down and then he says there's something i hear about you you know something but listen it's a phase and five years from now you're gonna look back on this and you're gonna meet a nice woman and you're gonna get married it's just a phase and i'm like really phase i've been going through forever I mean, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. And so maybe since then, we haven't really talked about it. And it's really interesting because my dad knows all my business for the most part because he's, you know, like working yeah, you're with like, me. And he's like your best friend. You guys are very close. Absolutely. But there is that one thing that I probably need to sit down with him again because it's hard to have a best friend and you don't tell them everything Dang. about your life you right. know he doesn't need to know all the little details but i'm just saying that we don't have those kind of conversations why do you think though at first you were dating married men well at first it was an accident i didn't even know that married men you know dated gay you know gay men i didn't know that at 19 years old when i met oh. um elmo you know kevin clash right at the wait, bar wait i forget was he married to a woman he was married to a woman at the time really? i found out in the people magazine oh my you know, god I told you that. that's right I can't even believe Kevin Clash was married to a woman. Yeah, he okay, told me on. that um, that it was his niece, the little girl in the picture in the bedside table. So for the, those of you all that don't know, Kevin Clash did the voice in the movement for Elmo, Tickle Me Elmo first. So he worked years. for Jim Henson for years and years and years. I met him when I was 19 years old. My uncle and I were at a gay bar in the West Village of New York City called The Monster. Okay. Oh my God, I love it. And he came over, he sent a friend over and the guy asked me if he could buy me a drink and I said, he said, what are you drinking? Amaretta Sour. <laughs> I think I heard it on Golden Girls or something. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck is an Amaretta Sour? You know, all that fucking, I'm surprised I didn't get diabetes at age 19. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so he bought me a drink, and then next thing you know, it's like, I don't know if they paid my uncle off, but my uncle was gone, and I was with Kevin. And we went to this diner. Oh, my God. You know, God. and then he took me back to his house. And, you know, you've heard the rest of the story. Yeah. But we kind of dated for a while. But there was a picture of a girl. He was my first. There was a picture of a girl, a little young girl, and she was the same age as my niece in Asia. You know, like she was only two years old or something. He said that was his niece. Oh, we're both gay uncles. This is so exciting. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it turns out that it was his daughter. I saw in the People magazine. Like oh six or God. Six or seven months later. Yeah. He- what I, I really want to like go knock on his door and be like, dude, what the fuck? Like, well, and I missed you... the fucking lawsuit. I, I mean, know, shit. I know you did because he All settled. All got paid off. Heck yeah, they did. He because he ended up having sex with what sixteen year old, a couple of sixteen year old boys or seventeen year old boys. Yeah, so I was a little up... long in the tooth at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. Anyway, um, James Franco. That story was absolutely bananas. Oh. Crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, we got like way off track on that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the, the dad therapy. Thank you so much for that. Actually, that's very helpful. Yes. Oh, it totally did. And I, I always, I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I was saying, and I watch Erica Jane, and she's always like, um, you know, well, recently she revealed that her dad has never been in her life, and then she reconnected with him at 25, but he, she overheard him talking about a conversation about how he never had kids. And so he never really acknowledged her existence. And of course, you know, her husband, Tom, who's the power attorney. Yeah. Um, who is like 
you know, uber rich from Aaron Brockovich, he is like 20 years, 25 years, or maybe even 30 years, her senior. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I watch it. I'm like, girl, you have so many daddy issues. You would have never married him if you'd figured that out. Well, I got to just touch one more, on one more thing about that. It's interesting because you always hear, you know, women say, oh, my God, my parents are badgering me about when I'm getting married and when I'm doing this and when oh, I'm yeah, doing mine, that. Oh, yeah, mine does too. Right. So there's a part of me that really respects that in terms of the parents being concerned because for me and probably for other people like me that have great relationships with their parents but they don't talk about that one thing. Right. I wonder sometimes, don't you ever wonder if I'm lonely? Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with your mom always asking you or other people's mom always asking them, maybe they just don't want you to be alone, which I think is very endearing. You know, people usually see it as a negative. <laughs> Does my mom not want me to be she alone? She doesn't want you to be alone. I don't know. Do you know? No, I think she's just a traditionalist, and I think she wants a wedding. Okay. <laughs> she just wants a wedding? Yeah, I think No, she but for, the, for most people, don't you think that it's that it could be that? Like, you yeah, know, parents are getting older and, yeah. I think they do. And that's what my mom says is like a family brings you so much joy. And my mom does always try to remind me. She's always like, look, your career, even if it's Oprah or whatever your career turns out to be, at the end of the day, that's all it is and when you pass like who's going to be there with you who are you going to build these memories oh, with that's true you know and i mean but i don't but then i think oprah has tons of great point. friends and stedman and that's stedman has too. stepkids and then she has all her girls in africa and she does you know i mean i don't think oprah's gonna be alone and you can always pay people to be there at your bedside but by the by a baby would be cute and we could bring you could bring the baby here we've got all these people i don't know their names but you know and that one and she's over there they're very pretty <laughs> hey guys you're interning and you're babysitting okay that'd be like a first Oh my God, that would be so crazy. Uh, Paul, baby. are you all, at all worried? Probably I'm the only sick person in here that's very obsessed with this, but um, they're saying now that hacked sex robots, robots could actually murder people um, during relations or when they're with them. By 2050, sex robots are going to completely eliminate the sex trade, okay? So they're saying that prostitution will not exist anymore, at least in adults. I'm sure there'll always be some sick fucks prostituting kids, but... In adults, it's all going to be gone because they're going to re be replaced with these like incredibly anatomically correct Sounds sex robots. Sounds awesome to me, by I the way. I agree. I can't wait to have sex. I'm getting one. I, me too. I can't wait to have sex with a robot. But the problem is, is they're also now <laughs> AI intelligence researchers are saying that they are warning people that the security risks are going to be very <laughs> bad, including that these robots could be hacked to carry weapons and kill you. Can you imagine being killed by a, a robot because you know the that's going to happen? The robot literally fucked you to death. <laughs> really? Yes. These robots I mean, weigh 200 imagine? pounds and they can be extremely oh, strong. Did well, they get up and like put themselves back in the closet? I mean, yeah. how are you going to do that? <laughs> Once a robot is hacked, the hacker has full control and can issue instructions to the robot. The last thing you want is for a hacker to have control over one of those robots. Once hacked, they could absolutely be used to be performed physical actions or um, an advantage scenario, which could be damaging. Mm. Researchers have already discovered security flaws with Bluetooth-enabled sex toys, which hackers could control from remote locations. <laughs> what? That's just not, I mean. Oh, my God. Death by a sex robot would be amazing. Who's going to be the first person to go on that? <laughs> How about this? Paul, would you ever, if your significant other ever, like, okay, we know, you know, Renzo is sort of on the scene. If Renzo from Brussels was emailing you on the regular going, Dearest Paul, what, like, what does a Brussels accent sound like? He sounds like this. He like talks this. like this because he's Italian and he lives in Brussels. He's very exact. Dearest Paul, I no longer want you to have long hair, darling. I want you to cut it short. Like, I want you... you to cut a check. That would be my response. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's it worth to you? You know what I mean? I got a number. This could be why you don't have it. <laughs> Maybe this Where is, is it. the love? Is this what? what do you do for Valentine's Day? Just search for like like lost checks? What are you trying to like, do? Like, Get me to jump off this fucking building? You know what I did for Valentine's Day? I treated myself to a bottle of motherfucking champagne. God damn it. Bitch, oh, you know what? You always shine me on this damn podcast. <laughs> this is too much. You know I did not do shit for motherfucking... Wait a minute. It's about to come again, isn't it? Yes. Oh, you know, this is... I'm having a book signing. I don't... 
I don't fucking know. We need to do a skit about Paul on dating because it's so funny. Like, I love that your response is like, if, if he called you and just wanted you to cut your hair, you're like, cut me a jacket. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, you know, you can always shut somebody up with that. They yeah. have all these requests. Okay, well, I don't see shit on the bedside table. I mean, you didn't even leave a couple of hundreds over there. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love you so You much. got requests. You got to pay if you got requests. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, really. You're like a I DJ. I can change all this shit up. Okay. Oh, God. You crack me up. Um, Kanye West apparently has been emailing Kim Kardashian, giving her fashion tips. Can you imagine being married to someone like this? I'd no. love to know if anyone listening is married to a man, woman, whoever, who, like, picks out your clothes for you, rates what you're wearing, and then emails you or gives you feedback. Can you imagine? Mm -mm. Me neither. He apparently will email Kim and just did it recently. She talked about it on a recent episode where he told her that big sunglasses are out. It's all about tiny little glasses. That's what Kim tells Courtney and Jonathan, her BFF, over lunch as Kanye is emailing her. Does that seem weird to you? Very. I don't like any note from anybody I'm dating like that that has to do with my appearance. Wait, I did I ever share you. this with the people about the, the Renzo telling me I had gained some weight? Yes, you did. I shared it with you privately or on the podcast? No, you shared it on the podcast because oh, okay. didn't it happen? Okay, you came That's back. That's why I haven't been back over there. Yeah, you came back from Italy and then... Did he see a picture of you? How did it? No, he told me there. In Italy, when you got, or when you went to Brussels, and then you. Went I was in Rome. He told me he was like, "Oh, you put on a five, uh, whatever they call it, stone or no, what they call it, some kilos." Kilos. I was like, "Excuse me, sir, I do not do drugs." <laughs> <laughs> like, no, bitch, you got fat. I'm like, okay, you know what? Me and you are on ice. So that's why I'm not as I I, I'm you. not as like lovey dovey with him anymore. He sounds yeah. And that's why he had to write me a check to get me to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Now you got your answer. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, a couple of serious stories. I, I'm so outraged. I don't know about you, but I'm so outraged with this H and M. The fallout continues. Um, <sighs> G Easy also has pulled out of his campaign. He was getting ready to launch a fashion line with them, and so has the weekend after, of course, retailer H and M. You probably saw the just like. What are they saying? Have so they said bad. anything yet? Oh, they've come out and apologized, and they said, you know, they're so they always try to be inclusive of everybody, and um, you know, they they're really sorry, and they're overlooking their policies, and blah blah blah, and they're shocked and embarrassed, um, but. You know, Twitter, of course, is still super, like, of course, upset. You know, if, if what it was is um, it was a hoodie on a little black boy who's absolutely adorable with the saying on the hoodie, coolest monkey in the jungle. Awful. I mean, can you even believe that? It was sold in the UK. It was briefly posted in the United States. It's so offensive. Well, before I, I even saw the headline of the story, I saw the image and I was like, wait, 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 what? I know. You know, when I was growing up, one thing that my parents put in my room, I had a little um, figurine of a little black boy. Okay. Um, and it said, black is beautiful. And I loved it. And I remember, I'm so happy that I had something like that to look at every day of my childhood growing up. I mean, it's important because, yeah. you know, to, to see things like that. I mean, imagine all the people that saw that that didn't think twice. I know. I know. You know? You know, and what I'm really proud about this story, The Weeknd and G-Eazy, the rapper, I'm, you know, normally you see all of these um, companies or whatever parting ways with an artist, parting ways with a spokesperson because they did something. Mm -hmm. And I love, love, love that these artists are standing up and going, you know what? The apology isn't good enough. Like, I mean, you're a major multi-million dollar like, company. How the hell... How do you think that happened? Like, you've worked in fashion. Do you think they just have interns posting shit on their website? And no, that like, was a major ad campaign. I think there's a lot of people that signed off on that. You do? I think there, there were. I don't think apologies should be accepted anymore. I think we, we should go to these companies. You know what? Show us your fucking process of how you got to the point that you allowed something so racist and offensive on a, your major website. Because I want to know, is that just that they are paying people shit and they're having interns basically post these images and they're just having some other intern basically pull their fashion line and that's how it works because they're saving money? No, they're or not is saving this... money. These people, oh my God, H&M have so much money. And so that's why the first thing they need to do with that apology is write a fat ass check to a charity that will help young black boys like this get education. They need to start a scholarship fund because of this foolishness and put some of these 
young boys in college. So, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's talking about this, and maybe I'm like way out of line for bringing this up, but I'm also kind of wondering the adorable little boy that this hoodie is on, like. When you were modeling or, or you're in the modeling world, the parents ever like, I don't know. I'm also like, where was this kid's parents? Because if I'm there at a photo shoot and they start putting this on my son, my African-American son, I mean, did anybody, did the parents? Well, you have a lot of parents that are willing to do anything to get their kids going, you know, in the right. industry. You know, you might say to them, oh, your kid has to travel to Alaska. Oh, no problem. We can go to Alaska and go with them. Or your kid has to... You know, uh, you know, you you've seen some of these movies where the kid has to curse or the kid's running around yeah. naked, and the parents are like, "Well, it's part of the art." So, you know, a lot of these parents are trying to get their kid going, and um, they just probably thought, "I don't know what that parent thought, but they just thought, hey, this is par for the course. This is what I need to do to get my kid uh, off the ground." Oh my God, I don't know. I'm just so sitting disturbing. there going, so disturbing. so disturbing. But how could they have caught this even before it came to America? I just don't. I don't get it. I don't I... understand. I don't know. There's really I, I think, no excuse. So they got to write a check. They got to write a check that's going to make a difference in some communities that really need it. That's actually a really good point. I love that. Uh, locally, this story is getting a lot of attention and very strange. Um, you probably know Sp Scott Parker. You know, for those of you listen, we have people that listen all over. I always like to say we're worldwide. <laughs> we uh, are, bro. We're worldwide. Uh, but we have lots of people that listen in Kansas and Texas and Australia. But for those of you who don't know, we record out of uh, D.C. Basically, we're in Arlington, Virginia, but we just consider it the D.C. area. So in Arlington, this this um, suburb of Washington, D.C., there's a guy named Scott Parker who is kind of, I don't know if he's self-professed or if he's just been given the title of kind of the king of Arlington because he's a well-known bar owner and bar promoter here. And mm -hmm. he is part owner of bars like A-Town and Don Tito and Goat and Barley Max. So all, and all these are very known for like Sunday fun day drinking parties. He kind of made A-Town more like a Vegas style restaurant than he did like a D.C. spot, right? Mm. Have you ever okay. been to A-Town? No. Crazy bot. Not my jam. I'm, like, there, if you want to feel old, walk in there. Ooh. Everyone is, like, 23. Not going. And, there's so, and I actually <laughs> walked by this weekend, and it just reminded me of everywhere, like, I don't want to be anymore. Because the kids, <laughs> it was everybody 21, 22. They're so shit-faced. They're wearing no clothes because it was, like, freezing. You know, it's, like, freezing, right? They're all drunk, and they're all trying to find their Uber. And there's, like, all these Ubers outside, but no one can figure it out. So they've all got their phone, and they're, they're on their phone. They're like, bro, where are you, bro? Bro, are you behind me? And the the guy is like literally. It's like a sea of Toyota Camry. They're so just, drunk. It's Toyota Camrys, as far as the eye can <laughs> yes, see. I'd have the one black suburban. <laughs> there I am. Excuse me. Get out of my way, people. Where's Andrea? I'm going to the signature suite at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> From A Town. That would be a moment. All right, all right. It's a bunch of Toyota Camrys and and Kias. Yeah, right. And so anyway, I just walked by. I was like, oh, my God, this scene is so epic because these kids just get so hammered and they're just a hot freaking mess. And that's the other thing, too, going back to like your thing of why you're attracted to young people. Have you gone to a bar where people are 21? I mean, I'm 35 and you couldn't pay me to fuck somebody 21. They're so Their vocabulary is just so lame. They're so wasted. It's just a mess. Mm. And they can't even grow a real beard yet. God. I know. Screw that. Do they fuck real quick? 21-year-olds? Because I think back then, I was like, mm. that was yeah, a quick they do. situation. Yeah, it AJ, like our in intern, is, is yes. Yeah. Okay. Is saying yes. She's not how talking about your, her AJ, boyfriend. Yeah, how old's your boyfriend? Is he 21? Uh, he's 24. Iggy? Okay. Iggy, yep. So 24. he's up to about 10 minutes? Seven? Yeah. Ten oh. minutes. There's I, no I, I, I mean, there. I'm even looking at him like, oh, that's a little long, okay, isn't five? it? Who's having sex <laughs> for ten Are minutes? We at about five, four. <laughs> can we get a two? Can we get a two point five? Maybe a three? Three on a good day, Whoa. four. We're talking, we're talking three, okay. four. <laughs> They're still living at her mom's house. So too, you got to so get right? it in quick. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're out of paper towels. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will, mom. All right, thanks. <laughs> four minutes later. <laughs> right. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. So anyway, Scott Parker, have you been, AJ, by the way, have you been to A-Town? You and Iggy must have been to A-Town. I have not. And I'm a big brunch person, but I, you know what? Really? I've never been to A-Town. You've got to go. You've I guess go. I've got to go. I've got to. And like for a while, I don't know if they That's still trouble, do this because I kind of find this offensive, but they also had little people like they would have on tables, like, you know, um, carrying bottles of champagne, all this stuff. Yeah, it's really crazy. You should Google the parties. It's like insane. So Aww. it used to be, I'm not sure if it's so crazy now, but anyhow. 
This is a bizarre story where Scott Parker, this business owner, and I've known Scott. Scott's been on the podcast, always been very nice in real life. Um, he has been impersonated by somebody online who has set up a complete account as though they were Scott, the bar business owner and marketer himself. And it all came to a head this week when Katie Reif, a news editor from AV Club, got a Facebook message telling her to, quote, eat a shotgun barrel for lunch Ooh. in response to a story she'd written about Oprah Winfrey potentially running for president. Oh, God. No surprise you would want fat Oprah as president. Would all oh. you do is whine like a little bitch with a skin knee all day about Trump, it read. Other language in the tirade was far uglier. Reif is no stranger to online trolls. Last summer, a radio shock jock had also sicked his followers on her and was ultimately banned from Twitter. But this was worse. It was one of the meanest things I ever received, she says. The message came from someone named Scott Parker. Reif did a reverse image search and discovered the profile photo belonged to one of the owners of several Arlington, Virginia bars, including A-Town, Don Tito, like we mentioned. Reif posted a screenshot of the message on Twitter and called out the publications that had praised his bars. As it turns out, though, Scott Parker, who threatened Reif, wasn't the Arlington bar owner. The real Scott Parker has been dealing with an internet troll attacking him and impersonating him for months, and he had no idea how bad things had gotten. The harassment began this past fall in 2017 with a Twitter account called at fuck Scott Parker, mm -hmm. whose profile read, hi, I'm Scott Parker, the world's biggest dickhead. The troll tweeted insults at him and his bars as many as five or 10 times a day. Ooh. It would say things like, I'm gonna get back at you. I'm gonna get blacked out with all my bros. All kinds of very bizarre shit, says Parker, who is a recovering alcoholic and doesn't drink. Parker says he never had a lot of drama in his life and doesn't recall any particularly angry customer. Uh, Parker goes on to say, quote, I felt confused, surprised that someone would have that sort of problem with me and then also spend enough time to create a Twitter page devoted to saying, fuck me. Parker most, mostly ignored the tweets, um, and eventually enough friends reported the page that was taken down. He became aware of the Facebook page impersonating him about a month ago when it began friending his friends. Mm. The catfish blocked him so he couldn't see it. Still, Parker says the Facebook page hadn't caused any problems for him until he found out about the message to Rife, which just happened this week. Mm. Rife deleted her tweets and posted an update when she realized that she had the wrong guy. She says, I felt so bad. Uh, there's no real protocol for when you get attacked by a, a troll. And so you try to use your investigative skills to find the out, you know, who on the Internet is doing it, according to Rife. Parker is still reeling from the fallout. In the past 24 hours, he and his establishments have gotten a number of phone calls and emails calling him a misogynist, piece of shit and worse. Um, plus, he still doesn't know what other damage fake spot Scott Parker may have done. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't anyway, and a little obvious, though, that that wasn't him. Wouldn't you like. I mean, a public figure usually wouldn't send messages like that. Do you think Rife should have been smart enough, this Katie Rife should have been smart enough to know that it probably yeah. was a troll? I mean, that could really damage his business, sending messages like that. It just doesn't make any sense. <gasps> I just think it's so scary that more of this Pizzagate stuff is happening and more. And you remember, remember the email that was sent to a lot yeah. of our sponsors that was yeah. someone fake that was basically saying that, I, you know, I, I don't even remember. I, I'd have to, like, bring it up. But basically saying that I was causing drama between at that when we threw the crazy um oh, the election night party yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 and I was divisive and blah 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 so it's really scary like what people can do for your business gosh I know I know isn't that bananas I think it is but it seems pretty obvious to me I mean sometimes you just gotta you know do a little recon and figure that out especially if you're it. a journalist you know <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. Or you think maybe she would have DM'd Scott Parker first. You know what I mean? Like, and said, hey, I don't know. I would have maybe. Andrea, <laughs> get A-Town on the phone. <laughs> no. Gas up the Beamer. We're going to A-Town. <laughs> going to get my to nunchucks, support. please. Put them in the car. <laughs> Pick me up at Equinox. I want to see you with nunchucks. <laughs> in the VIP. <laughs> in the... In the, in the Supreme Court, <laughs> darling. I just enjoy it. I just think they're just sweet. She, he Ritz loves, I he just loves love her. the impression so much. She <laughs> makes I think me Paul laugh. Just, Paul just likes to hear anything that's, that, re that relates back to him. And yeah. like, Do <laughs> you know what? 
<laughs> Cut her mic. I want her off the show. It's me or her. Oh, I love it's you. Her. You know what? It's <laughs> me or her. Uh, look, we have two listener email updates. You guys can always email us, as we told you earlier, at sarah at heyfrage.com. It's Paul Wharton style at yahoo.com. Hey, Sarah and Paul, I've been a huge fan, Sarah, since the 99 Five Days and listened to Sarah, Ty, and Mel, and I have been loving the podcast. I am super proud of everything you guys are doing, and I love hearing you and Paul every Wednesday. Anyway, with the holidays and the start of the new year, I've been thinking about volunteering my time and donating to church organizations, but I'm having a hard time narrowing down all the options. I can tell you and Paul both care a lot about people from chats about foster care to helping out the woman fighting cancer that you mentioned last week. Do you have any suggestions or favorite charities to support in the Washington, D.C., Arlington area? I would love to hear your suggestions. Do you have any, um, who do you, I know you work a lot with charities. Yeah, I work a lot with the Capital Area Food Bank. So the Capital Area Food Bank is under Feeding America. So they are the hunger relief hub in all of Maryland, D.C. and Virginia. They feed over 500,000 people a year with 30 million pounds of food, half of which, thanks to the former first lady, is fresh produce. And so they support 700 partner agencies. So working with them means you get connected with shelters and soup kitchens. Um, Bread for the City, Muriel's Kitchen, all these other places that you can help. So hunger relief and homelessness is like a big cause for me. And so for me, I would go through the Capital Area Food Bank. I love that one. Um, I would give you just two quick suggestions. One is a charity that Paul and I have been a part of called 2% Project. Mm. They raise money for um, teenage women and men who get pregnant and decide to keep their child. They give uh, money, support. um, They help with babysitting so those teens can finish school, go on to a college, um, make a living for themselves and support their child. So 2% Project I really like. And then also Active Minds, which is on um, 300 college campuses across the country, helps with mental health. So it's all about giving support if you are depressed, if you have ADHD, if you have an eating disorder, really deals with mental illness because um, college is that time that one of the times when people are so um, vulnerable to suicide and depression. Um, So they're really great. So I would try either one of those. I think that's great. I think we should do a charity day or weekend uh, with the podcast and our listeners, anybody Mm. in this area. Maybe this spring we'll do that. Yeah, that would be really, really good. Yeah, that'd really be great good. to do it all together. Yeah, oh my God, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. Those are, there's some great charities around here, so we, we work closely with them. Uh, also, a lot of you have asked about Natalie. You've inquired about her. She is the woman we told you about last week who wrote us this really touching email, and she is underway. She is battling cancer. We know she's going to beat it. Her prognosis is very, very good. She starts chemo end of January, and she wanted um, us to know she is starting, as I mentioned, end of January, so they're thinking like the second week of February she's going to have her hair cut, and Paul and I are going to help her get a wig. Also, if you want her email address, I'm going to give it to you right now. And then people can write to Natalie. Um, She did not want, she said that, you know, she's been fortunate enough right now. She is kind of the head of the household, but she thinks that she's financially okay. Her job is sort of working with her. So she's going to give us some names of some charities that she um, wants us to, if if anybody does want to donate. She's awesome. Exactly. I know. She's like such an amazing woman, but we're definitely going to help her. And if you want to send her a little gift, a little note. You don't even have to give her anything, like she said. Um, it's B-Y-N-S-I-L-V-A-14. So by N Silva 14 at hotmail.com. She said that um, we can give out her email address. So if anyone wants to send her some good vibes or love it. Exactly. Or, or has some more thoughts. That what this and, is all about? Yes, that's totally why we're doing I this. I mean, telling all of our business, <laughs> get people to like us, and then, you know, I mean, but but the fact that she would share this with us and include us in such an important part of her life, I mean, we are going to help you through this, Natalie, and we just love you so much. Yeah, and she wrote us a really sweet email, and she said, you guys had me in tears by reading my email on the podcast last week. I was about to answer your email, and I saw the podcast reminder on my phone, and then I saw my name. I could not believe how wonderful you guys are. You are you've already lifted my spirit more than ever today. I'm blessed to have your podcast in my life and in the life of other people who are right now struggling with the same diagnosis. So we're going to keep you posted on her progress throughout, but I thought that was so good. And lastly, I wanted to kind of end the show. I thought this article was so good. Um, do you ever, I mean, you have such a great career, Paul, and, and but you have been very honest that you've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows sure. and you keep working through it. Was there ever a point though, or do you ever still have moments where you're like, oh my God, is this going to work out? Or should I do something different? Or should I give up? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know what? It, there is no giving Absolutely up. Absolutely not. There is no giving up. You just True. don't give up. You can recreate yourself. You can move to a different area. You can do something else. But I think that once you believe in yourself enough to know that you can get out of any sticky situation, you know, you're good. You are. Yeah, you never have that moment. Okay, I stall. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? Don't the, you think the moment of giving up? De- what would I do if I gave no. up moving with my mama? I mean, you know, I, that's a good point. You know, so maybe if maybe if I was with Renzo and you know I, he was keeping me in the manner of which I had become accustomed, and I was like a house husband, and I could think, eh, you know, why struggle? You know, I can just be with him. I don't really struggle, but you know, like that. Right. Do you know? Yeah. If yeah, I yeah. had somebody that was depending on like that, but I wouldn't put the burden of my life on like my mom or my dad and just give up no no no. yeah I wouldn't like give up like not work but I think you know I I wrestle all the time with being patient you know like I always really do believe that um you know God hands you the gift when you're ready and I think too like you're all you have to be patient because it really is all on God's time but Mm -hmm. that's very hard because lots of I'm just such a type a person like I'm like why isn't it all happening all at once you know what I'm saying well I don't see my career in just you know doing just one thing I think as I get older and as the years go past I'm gonna need to be challenged and do different things. So, you know, I'm in front of the camera now, but I won't always be. Maybe at some point I'll just want to be producing and creating content. Right. You know, so it's always evolving. It's always changing. And I'm willing to go with that flow. So for that reason, I'll never give up because I'll just do something else. Well, there's an amazing article by Roxanne Gay. I totally, I will not read it to you, but I will let you um, Google it. It's called, Is It Too Late to Follow My Dreams? So today, if you are just going, oh my God, is this working out? What am I doing? And Roxanne is a writer and she had two women write to her. And this is just the question. And then I'll I'll let you kind of Google the article and read the rest. But they say, Dear Roxanne, I'm a writer who just turned 65. I've written two as yet unpublished books. Numerous excerpts have been published. I'm working on another book despite feelings of failure and despair. Am I too old to have a career in writing? Does age play a part in artistic success? Her answer is so good. And anyway, it just goes on and it's very, very encouraging. So I wanted people to check that out. And lastly, maybe we'll have our two interns jump on. Are you a big um, Justin Timberlake fan? I, I, you know, I, I could take him or leave him. I mean, you know, really? he's fine. Why do you, why do you feel that way? You just, you just never been into well, his music? You know music me, or? I'm so mad about Janet, you know. No, I you're mean. not, you're not alone. There was a great article actually that. Um, That's has, my girl been getting a lot of attention uh, this week, and it's called Justin Timberlake is Officially Uncool. Ooh. And it says, when exactly did this happen? Charting the slide from Like I Love You to Today's Filthy. By the way, did anybody listen to Filthy, the song, the new song that he put out? Our inter- really? So our interns are all under the age of 24. Do you guys like not care? AJ, you, and then we want to have Leslie on. Do you not care about Justin Timberlake? Yeah, not a big, not a big JT fan. Really? I don't know what it is. And I don't know what Jessica sees in him either. Really? Oh my God. No, okay. So, do you think he should still be doing the Super Bowl? I mean, like, he's no, like yeah, an odd I, choice for the Super Bowl, right? Really? Like, he's not really hot right now. I agree. Oh my God. Am I the only person? Oh my God. Dick in a Box is one of my favorite okay, skits that, of all time. He's great on SNL, for sure. He's Bring him so back. funny. But other than that, it's you time. just like Dick, though, Sarah. <laughs> I mean, you know. We didn't even I get to the that. penis whitening story. That one was awesome, too. If I had a dig, I would totally funny. get it. I don't know why. Yeah, I am fascinated with penises. I really do. I like why does it have to be whitening? Why, how come it's not lightning? What does a black guy look like walking around with a white dick? That would be awesome. <laughs> Remember when we had that story about the, the African-American guy who got a white penis transplant? I was asking you, like, if your dick was sliced off and your only option was a white transplant, would you want it? And how awesome would that be? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, if I... I take it. I mean, if I ever lost my testicle and then I got a black one, I would whip that thing out at every party. A black testicle? That would be awesome. And a white dick? Yes. Could you imagine? That would be such a great party story. You'd just be there and you'd be like, oh. Just sit down. Oh, my God. Dick in a box is one of my favorite things. Girl, you know we've been together. Do you know this? I do. I mean, I've seen it. I don't know it like you. Oh, my God. (laughs) To lay it on the line. Yeah, you no, know, it's Christmas. Okay, I guess I'm the other lights. It's definitely a classic, but you know. Well, look, this article is so well very controversial, but a lot of people are basically agreeing with all of you guys. Leslie's our other intern. How old are you? Twenty one. I wish I'm twenty four. Twenty four. These God, girls you look are so babes. young. I know. Thank you. Twenty four is young. Yeah. No, I mean she looks like really young, like well, nineteen. Thank you. Did you ever like Justin Timberlake? I mean, I know, like, he's cute, but I don't like him. 
Ooh. I mean, why? He's cute, but I don't like his music. I don't know. I mean, he's not from. I mean, my sister would like him more than, than I do. So, I mean, he's not that cool for me, I guess. I, well, you guys aren't alone. And a lot of people agree with you, by the way, where they feel like Justin Timberlake has essentially come up on the backs of a lot of African-American singers. That's what a lot of people have said. Mm-hmm. Using Timbaland at being one of them. Um, and then also a lot of cultural appropriation. If you remember back in the Britney Spears days, he would often wear cornrows. This article goes in on him, okay? Wow. Basically says that his credit and his fan base have now become woke and are aware of the social and structural advantages that he's enjoyed throughout his career as a straight white man in America. It's been almost 14 years since JT famously exposed Janet Jackson's breast and himself as a little weasel. During the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, while Janet, a black woman, and her glittering career took an almighty bashing, Justin's star shone brighter. People Magazine even dubbed him the Teflon Man. Because none of the fallout from, quote, Nipplegate actually stuck to him. Gotta love privilege. That's the article. This goes on. But one thing I don't agree with is everybody's saying, oh, my God, Janet Jackson's never been the same. Look, she just had a sold out, like, world tour. She yeah, just came, she just had a baby, had this tour, and it wasn't at DAR Constitution Hall. It wasn't like at small arenas. It was at big arenas. So, I mean, yeah, and the time before that, she went on tour, like, Two times before that, right? Didn't she have a health issue? Now, Didn't she get pregnant? She, I did see her at a little small little place back in the day. I, I, you know what? <laughs> Let me just get my story straight. Okay, post Nipplegate, things were a little bit, <laughs> were a little bit hairy. Yeah, you know, for a moment they really were. But now she's back. Well, this article, this writer goes on to say too, and I didn't. I guess I haven't really followed this um, fully, but apparently that Justin Timberlake has never apologized to Janet, and. In reading his timeline, I guess that's true. And my thing is, though, I think for this Super Bowl, if Justin Timberlake doesn't bring out Janet Jackson, I think it will be really bad for his career. Or Don't get you? down on one knee and apologize or do something. I agree. Or do it. What if he did a Janet Jackson song and he did all the moves and he sang her song? Would people say, he's trying to take her moment? Uh, yeah, I think he has to bring her out. I think he 100... I mean, I think he's going bring to. Bring her out? Do you think that she Janet Jackson would just come out in the Super Bowl without being hyped up, announced, and all that? You think she'd be a surprise guest? Isn't that kind of like... I do. You're a little... Like yeah, because like, it's the Missy biggest Elliott stage. Missy Elliott came out when Beyonce was performing, but she's Missy Elliott to Beyonce, but, but Janet Beyonce... Jackson is not like the side piece to Justin Timberlake. Yeah, but Beyonce came out with Coldplay, remember? And we didn't know Beyonce was going to be there, or did yes, we? Yes, you did. We Beyonce did. was the main one. Wait a minute. I don't think so. With the Super Bowl like two years ago, it was Coldplay, and then they had no. like Beyonce. Someone's got to go Oh, no. That. No, 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 no. Anyway. We knew it was Beyonce. How are Beyonce going to be Coldplay's opening act? Are you kidding me? I swear to God, because Beyonce. White had privilege. Done it. <laughs> White privilege. <laughs> anyway, the article is from Noisy. You should read it. It's really good. It makes you really think about JT's career. I was like, oh, damn, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's not such a great... And, of course, everybody's just, like, roasting Filthy, which is the new song that he's got out. And I, I think Filthy's pretty bad, i got to admit. I don't think it's very good. I mean, I always will love Dick in a Box. I think that's one of the best songs, like, ever made. But it's not yeah, really... No, a- we'll, we'll see. You know, he was asked about the uh, Super Bowl by Ryan Seacrest on the red carpet of the Golden Globes. And he was like, huh? What do you mean? Ooh, oh, give us a, a game? Break. What? Oh. I'm like, okay. Yeah, please. We're way over that. Um, anyhow, you can you can read the full article, and I don't know. It's pretty amazing. I, yeah, I don't know. His career's been interesting. I mean, I do think he's super talented, though. You know what? Even more than he just seems like a really nice guy. Doesn't he seem like a nice guy? I mean, despite you know, people can. Mm. You I don't, don't know. So? He's one of those two. Well, you know, there was also a lot of controversy at his wedding that they essentially, um, I don't know if they hired or made fun of basically mentally handicapped people at his, yeah, you got to read that. Like apparently at his um, bachelor party, mm-hmm. there was maybe a kid that was autistic or something and they like started making fun of him. Yeah, this was like widely reported and then Ooh. he tried to shut it down. Okay, yeah. you All know right. what? Maybe it's over. Him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe it's You're just filthy. totally over. You feel the animal. I really love Dick in a Box. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You it's just in a box. Much. It's my half white, half black penis in a box. <laughs> <laughs> no? I don't know about that. that work? Okay, fine. Uh, Paul, what else? Are we good? I think we are so good that, um, you know, it's just time to put my dick in a box and. See what that brings. Five me. stars, darling. <laughs> Signature sweet. Ritz Carlton. <laughs> Premium only. 
Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Equinox Gym, darling. More. Put the password in. More. Uh, more. Come on. Come on, more. King exclusive number one. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. I love it. Come on. What okay, you know, we got to end the show. That's like... <laughs> All right, look, you guys, we oh, love gosh. you. Be sure to follow us on social media. At Hey Frazier, yeah, at Paul Wharton. At Paul Wharton, at Paul Wharton Style. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Email us. Order Bye, my book. Everybody. Order the book. <laughs> Bye. Woo. Woo. Guests separated from the rest, entertaining nonetheless. Many topics to address. Sarah, she's so glamorous, the number 